to my husband, my honey bunches of oats, my forever. I can't believe today is finally here. There are no words to explain how happy I feel. Growing up, I had a list of qualities I was looking for in a husband. Someone kind, funny, and trustworthy. A good partner, future father, and friend. I found it all and more in you. You're my best friend. You make me laugh daily. You encourage me to try hard things and be the best version of myself. Mackenzie, I'm the luckiest man in the world. You're the answer to so many of my prayers. In all my life, I've never been so certain I got something right. I vow to work the rest of my life paying back the debt that I owe you to have been lucky enough to really call you my wife in this life. Three. You love others unconditionally and always give 100%. I'm constantly inspired by how hard you work and how you uplift others in your life. I love you for all the big things, but I love the little things even more like getting me water before bed every night and sending me clips of you singing our favorite song. I never doubt how much you love me and that makes my love for you stronger each and every day. I'm so lucky to be your bride and I can't wait to continue building a future together and one day start our family. I know our life will be full of new challenges, experiences and joys, but I wouldn't want to live them with anyone else but you. I found my home a thousand miles away from home with you. I know I vow to honor, to love and honor you with all my heart and soul for, the, for eternity, for the rest of my days, on our best days, our worst days, and every day in between. I want you to remember that every day that I'm able to wake up next to you reminds me of God's grace and that I made the best decision in my life. I love you. Let's In an hour, we're gonna say our vows in front of our loved ones, but I wanna make these promises to you now. I promise to always be your best friend and biggest supporter. I promise to make sure you fish often and that I always listen to you talk about how fishy the day is. I promise to love you for who you are and who you become. I promise to be the best sous chef there ever was. I promise you will never have to face the challenges of life alone but I will be the glue with you. So let's enjoy the day, celebrating the past, present, and future of our love with our family and friends. I'm so grateful that God gave me you every day. I love you. Baby, last night was hands down One of the best nights that I've had, no doubt Between a bottle of wine and the look in your eyes And the Marvin Gaye Then we danced in the dark under September stars And the pouring rain And I know that I can't ever tell you enough That all I need in this life is your crazy love If I never get to see the northern lights Or if I never get to see the Eiffel Tower at night Or if all I got is your hand in my hand Baby, I could die a happy Friends and family of Jack and Mackenzie, we're gathered here together in the sight of God to join these two together in holy marriage, which is an honorable estate. It's instituted by God, and it signifies for us the union that is between Christ and his church. Christ performed his first miracle there at a marriage, and Paul commended it to be honorable among, among all, and therefore should not be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but soberly, discreetly, and in the love of God. 
into this holy covenant, these two people come now to be joined. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Never tell you enough that all I need in this life is your crazy love. If I never get to see the northern lights, or if I never get to see the Eiffel Tower. Mary Kate has a reading from Song of Solomon. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy unyielding as its grave. It burns like a blazing fire, like a flame, mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. It one were to give all the wealth of one's house for love, it would be utterly scorned. Jack and Mackenzie, I encourage you to take in this moment. Look around, look at the faces of people that mean so much to you family and friends and loved ones who've invested in you, who've cheered for you, who've walked with you, and are today here to celebrate with you. They are here because of their love and support for you. It is before the Lord, the great and mighty and loving God, that all of the secrets of our heart are known, and you stand today to make a very important covenant before Him. For thousands of years, believers have felt that it was right and good that such a holy moment should be shared with your people, that the pledge of faith you're about to make should include witnesses. You can be confident that if the holy vows you're about to make are kept as God's word commands, and if you follow closely after the heart of God, he will grant you fulfillment in your marriage and will establish your home in peace. God is love, and the sacred covenant between a man and a woman is blessed by our loving God and should not be thought, entered into thoughtlessly or irreverently, but advisedly, knowing that marriage was not first man's idea, but God's idea, for he ordained and blessed marriage. Hear these words from the word of God about what love does. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Having considered and prayed about the covenant you are about to make, I ask you before these loved ones and before the Lord, Jack, do you take Mackenzie to be your wedded wife, to live together according to God's guidance in the holy state of marriage? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to her so long as you both shall live. I do. Always. Mackenzie, do you take Jack to be your husband, to live together according to God's guidance in the holy estate of marriage? Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only to him, so long as you both shall live? I do. If you'll repeat after me, Jack. I, Jack, take you, Mackenzie, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, according to God's holy word, I pledge to you my loyalty and love, as long as we both shall live. I, Mackenzie, take you, Jack, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, according to God's holy 
word. <laughs> and I pledge to you my loyalty and love as long as we both shall live. What token do you offer in pledge of your vows? The wedding ring is made of precious metal, which is pure and uncompromising. It symbolizes the sacredness of the marriage relationship and the uncompromising commitment that Mackenzie and Jack are making to each other. The rings, the rings are circular, having no beginning and end or ending, signifying the permanence of the marriage covenant. Marriage is not temporary or short term, but is for life and therefore without end. The wedding ring is an outward and a visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying to all the uniting of Mackenzie and Jack in holy marriage through Christ. Lord, may you bless these rings that they who give them and receive them may abide in your peace in all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ. Mackenzie, I give you this ring as a sign of my vow and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. With this ring, I thee wed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jack, I give you this ring as a sign of my vow and with all that I am and all that I have, I honor you. With this ring, I thee wed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jack and Mackenzie will be doing a rope ceremony. These ropes symbolize they're separate, separate lives, separate, separate families, and separate, separate life stories up to this moment. The individual ropes represent their lives before today, but as they quite literally tie the knot, it represents two lives who are now being joined into one cord. It represents these two families and these two stories merging into one. Separate lives now becoming one unified story. It becomes a rope of unity, signifying your oneness in marriage. From this day on, you are bound in love, in God's love, and your love for each other. May Christ's love guide you all the days of your life. As they're doing that, I'm gonna read Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Let me share just a few thoughts and encouragement for you as your pastor and as you start this journey together. Your friends and family have gathered together to celebrate and to honor the commitment that you're making to each other and the blessing that you are to each other. As you embark upon this journey of marriage, allow me to offer three things that should always guide your relationship. The first of those is unfailing love. There's a biblical word for it, it's called hesed. It means never ending love and the adjective is important because love that Christ extends to us and calls us to is different it's supernatural it comes from him and not from us it's not a feeling it's more than that it's commitment 
You know, there are many parts of this service and there's a lot of parts to planning a wedding. I'm sure you know that, right, Jack? Yeah, right. But you know what the most important part of the wedding is? What we're doing right now, the vows. Because after the kiss, yep, that will come. And after we change out of the clothes and return home and get on with life, the vows before God will prove to be the most important part that happened today. Vows in marriage are important because we aren't, none of us are, by nature, unfailing or loving. Did you hear those words from 1 Corinthians? Well, if what love does, it always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, never fails. That's supernatural. That's Jesus stuff. We as human beings bite off more than we can chew. We get swept away in emotion. We even let ourselves down we make promises because we're saying there will be days when I'm not at my best. There will be days when like worse or poorer or sickness. And we say that today because I made this promise, I'm going to be faithful. I'm in this. The vows are serious and they're all inclusive. For better or worse includes everything. For fat, for thin, for hunky, chunky, patient, impatient good hair, no hair, emotional, rational, freaked out, involved, clueless, responsible, irresponsible, passive, aggressive, whatever it is, we're going to stay faithful. It's the vows that will keep you. We say often in weddings that we should keep our vows, but I want to tell you something. It's the vows that will keep you. Because on the days when you're at your lowest, and those days when you feel like you've blown it, you can look at your spouse and say, you know what? We made a commitment to each other. And I know that he, I know that she will love me no matter what. You know what that is? Grace. So always let your marriage be filled with love, unfailing love. The second is this, humility. Jesus was a humble servant and we take our cues from him. The world thinks that kings and queens change the world, but they don't, servants do. And you can change the world by serving each other. Third thing, continue to have a tribe of people around you that will support you and encourage you. And it really helps if they're funny. You need each other. I'm sure you have some of those. Yeah, yeah, you're covered. You need each other, but you also need community too. You can do life alone, but it really isn't very much fun. You need people around you that can laugh encourage you and pray for you and strengthen you when you're at your weak. Marriage is a journey. This actually isn't the ending, but the beginning. This isn't, as the fairy tales have taught us, it's not the happily ever after part. This actually is the once upon a time part. Once upon a time, Jack took Mackenzie to be his beloved wife and she took him to be her husband. You get to write the story from there. I don't know all your journey will hold, but I've lived long enough to know that the journey you are embarking on will have some surprises. It will require your devotion, your love, your creativity, your endurance, your cooperation, and at times, flat out heroism so that you can get to the happy ever after part. But no, make, make no mistake, you can make it and you will. As you begin this journey, may the presence of Christ always guide you. There's no better journey for life you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for Jack and Mackenzie. Thank you for the presence of your spirit here today. Thank you for the genuine love that they have for one another. Thank you for the love that has brought them together and may you bless them with your peace. Bind them together in the matchless and marvelous love of Christ. Guide their lives according to your truth. Protect them from the evil one and guard their minds and hearts in Christ. And may they be to others an example of the power of of your love, in the name of Jesus, amen. Nathan has a reading, the blessing of the hands.
These are the hands of your best friend, young and strong and full of love for each other, that are holding yours on your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that will work alongside yours as you build your future. These are the hands that will countless times wipe the tears from your face, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. These are the hands that will give you support and encouragement to chase down your dreams. These are the hands that will give you strength when you need it, and these are the hands that will lift your chin and brush your cheek as they raise your face into eyes that are filled with overwhelming love for you. And lastly, these are the hands that even when wrinkled and aged will still be reaching for yours and giving you the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. Well, for as much as you have solemnly pledged yourselves to live together in the joyful covenant of marriage, and you've declared the same before God and these people, and by giving and receiving rings, by the authority given to me as a minister of the gospel of Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, whom God has joined together. Let no one separate. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord rejoice as he looks upon you and give you peace. Jack, let me kiss your bride. Spider-Man's control and Batman with his fist. And clearly I don't see myself upon that list. But she said, where'd you want to go? How much you want to risk? Loved ones, it is my privilege to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jagrit. Some superhero, some fairy tale bliss. Just something I can turn to, somebody I can kiss. I want something just like this. Do 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 do
Gentlemen, the new Mr. and Mrs. Jack and Mackenzie Britton, everybody. All right, this. <laughs> All right, this time we're gonna have Mackenzie stay right there on the dance floor. And next, we'd like to invite out her father, Daniel, for a very special dance, our father-daughter dance. So please, let's put our hands together for the both of them as well, everybody. Saturday, sleep, lay bed, head smile. Daddy, daughter, date down a cereal lot. Shop a cart, ride with my Goldilocks. Little arms wrapped around Lucky Charms box right there. That's my world. Father time must have never had a little girl. I know I'm gonna blink and I'm gonna be a mess when that Cinderella shirt is a wedding dress. And they gonna play that song. It's so bittersweet. And I remember her and her little bare feet dancing on the toes of my boots. I'ma try not to cry, but shoot Y'all gonna have to give me a break If you see a few tears These are just some really, really, really good years I bet daddy's girls will stay a little A little bit longer If father time had a dog Yeah, I know she can't stay forever young Hell, I pray for the guy that gets to lift that veil But I'm even gonna miss letting her paint my nails When they play that song, it's so bittersweet And I remember her and her little bare feet Dancing on the toes of my boots I'ma try not to cry, but shoot Y'all gonna have to give me a break If you see a few tears This is just some really, really, really good years Daddy's girls will stay a little, a little bit longer. If I time, I don't One more time, please make some noise for the bride and her father, everybody. We have one more special dance we'd like to do. So next we're going to have Jack join his mother, Lori, for our mother-son dance. So let's make some noise for them as well, everybody. Proud of where I came from, 
bring back your home. It has that garden coming. His dad's just doing dumb shit. And how'd he keep you this long? Yeah, I'm sorry that I called you so late. I just miss you. One more time, please make some noise for the groom and his mother, everybody. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a really special day for Mackenzie and I. Everyone in this room helped mold Mackenzie and I into the people that we are today. For better or for worse, you know who you are. You taught us what unconditional love was, how to be a family. The people, you're the people that brought us to God, who taught us how to be a friend, who taught us how to break someone's ribs with my heel, how to, how to tie a bait and a hook onto a line, and, uh, and so, so much more. There's so many people I wish you all could have met tonight, and uh, just like around the holidays for me, it's, it's so easy to let those feelings detract from a moment like this, but tonight, seeing all your beautiful faces, I, I don't have those feelings of sorrow, I'm just filled with joy and gratitude for each and every one of you being here and sharing this day with us. So while this is Mackenzie and I's wedding, I raise a glass and toast to each every one of you. I hope you all have an amazing night tonight, and from the bottom of Mackenzie and I's heart, Thank you so much for being here. I do. I need this. Family. The new Mr. and Mrs. Britton, everybody. All right, we're going to ask our guests just to keep here. so years, Mackenzie has been my very best friend. You might be wondering <laughs> why 10, because I'm 26 and we've been together my entire life. But uh, as typical sisters do, we would fight and argue about anything and everything, and uh, including who got what Barbie, who got to sit up front in the car. Uh, I might have tattled on her probably more than she would have liked, but typical sisters, you know, Things happen, but um, but then I think we finally found some common ground and realized that even though we didn't choose to be in each other's lives, we definitely preferred it that way. They say that there's no better friend than a sister, and there's truly no better sister than McKinley. Uh, I think our friend status has been 10 years or so, kind of jokingly, but deep down, we've always been the best of friends. Growing up, I always had her. No matter what was going on or where we were in life, she was always there for me and still is. <laughs> She's a role model for me to look up to and aspire to be like. I've always seen her as the most impressive person I've ever met. 
She's so intelligent and so kind. And even when she's extremely busy or stressed, she always answers my face and sends me a post. She knows that I'm fat. Uh, or she'll text me some encouraging words when she didn't even know how bad I needed it. She's pushed me and guided me in ways that I don't think I'll ever be able to repay her. And I can't imagine a life without my sister. And I definitely can't imagine a life without her being my best friend. I feel like when it comes to my siblings, I can't imagine that there's anyone out there that's good enough for them. I remember meeting Jack, and as any sister should be, I was weary of her getting close to some guy from Florida that I know nothing about. But seeing him with my sister and hearing the way that they talk about each other really put all of my fears at ease. And she hasn't ended up on Dateline yet, so I think that's a good sign. <laughs> No, okay, but we got lucky with Jack, not just Mackenzie. I think that my whole family would say that they feel lucky to have him and to know him. Jack is such a light to any room. He's funny, he's caring, and he will lend his hand to anyone and everyone. All great things that you would want in a brother-in-law. Most importantly though, he adores Mackenzie in every way she d deserves to be adored. And he is someone that I know I can trust to take care of my sister. Sorry. and make her happy <laughs> even when she's over a thousand miles away <laughs> so i'm glad that you became part of our family today and we couldn't have asked for a better guy <laughs> anyway so mckenzie and jack i want to say thank you for such a beautiful day and congratulations i truly wish you the best so everyone lift your glasses to the Bretons. cheers to a lifetime of happiness together well, that'll definitely be tough to beat, but um, my name is Chris Erdmeyer. I'm one of two of Jack's best men. And um, so the, the first day I met Jack was in sixth grade and it was at PE class. And I think we were playing dodgeball and only one thing kind of stuck out. And that was, he was putting in a lot of effort into dodgeball and <laughs> That theme kind of has kept and it's carried on into our lives and um, our relationship, you know, as, as best friends. So in, in high school, after middle school, um, you know, the jump that he took, you know, in baseball from freshman to, to senior year was, was truly remarkable. Um, by senior year, he had one of the, the best batting averages in, in the district. And uh, truth be told, I was always a little bit of jealous of Jack because he had a little bit more of athletic ability than I did. And um, but but looking back, what really kind of stuck, you know, stood out was his work ethic. Um, and then Jack really couldn't get rid of me. So we decided to go to college together as well. So at at, at Go No Holes, of course. At Florida State, uh, he double majored in, in finance, go halls, and accounting. And just the, just watching his work ethic, it you know motivated me to be better. And that's something that um, you know I'll always be grateful to you about. Um, just the way you pushed you know everybody, and um, you know it's it's always been the case with you. So you know I, I thank you for that. And um, Mackenzie, um, I could not have asked for a nicer and more genuine person for Jack and um, to, to share his life with. And you truly bring out the best of him. And it's just been such a pleasure to watch you two grow for the last couple of years and just, just to be a witness for that. Um, and Jack, I promise if you continue to work hard on being the best person and husband and Mackenzie, then I know you two will have a wonderful life together. And uh, I can't wait to be a part of it. So if everybody could please raise their glasses to the Britons. Before I start my speech, I'd like to thank both sets of parents for the last two days, parents and families. Um, I think it's fair to say that none of us would be here today if it wasn't for the love and sacrifice that our parents have made. So for that, we're forever grateful. Now let's get to the good stuff. <laughs> I'm Bubba. 
Jack's other best man and his best friend. We've been best buds since the eighth grade when our Spanish teacher thought Jack was bullying me. But really, <laughs> it was because she only turned around right when Jack was hitting me back because I had already hit him. She thought he was picking on the new kid. So that year, my first year at Berkeley, we formed a friendship that I know will last a lifetime. I can honestly say that Jack is one of the smartest people I know. He's proven that over and over again. Graduating from Berkeley with a 4.0, going on to FSU and getting a double major in finance and accounting, and doing all of this while being an incredible friend, a competitor, and the only one in our friend group that would throw on the boxing gloves and box me. <laughs> it ended in a draw. That was a few pounds ago for me though, so I probably shouldn't try that with Jack again. He goes to MMA three times a week, so I'm not stupid either. Taekwondo, sorry. <clears throat> so this morning, on the way to breakfast, I was trying to figure out if Jack and I have caught more fish together, played more golf rounds together, or drank more beers together. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys are thinking that's an easy question, right? It's gotta be beers. Well, yes, it is beers. <laughs> but it was closer than you think. Jack, my brother, I hope we can play golf and fish together for 70 more years because we know the beards are a given. I will also say this about Jack. He is loyal. Kenzie, I know he can be a pain in the ass sometimes, but he's loyal. <laughs> I know this because Jack has always been the go-to and the best dog sitter when my wife and I have needed it. Dogs are cute, but when it's not your dog, they're cute for like one day max. After that, you can't get rid of them. You know you have a true friend when you ask them to watch your dog and they agree to it. Now remember at the beginning of this speech, how I said Jack has proved over and over again how smart he is. Well, he's done it again today by tying the knot with Kenzie who is beautiful, who is caring, amazing. And one of the reasons that Jack left golf early yesterday. <laughs> I mean, seriously, throw out the rings, throw out the gifts. That's true love. Kenzie, please take care of our boy. And Jack, you don't get this lucky twice, so don't screw it up. Everybody will raise their glass. I'm going to end with this. Jack and I have had a lot of beers together. I hate to go back to that, but it seems appropriate. <laughs> well over a thousand is my guess. So here's to the happy couple and well over a thousand years of love and happiness together. Cheers. Bring the beat